Okay, so what's the best way to solve this type of equation in algebra? Well, if you're thinking to yourself, well, the best way to solve is the way that gets you the right answer. Well, you know what? I would agree with that. Okay, There's actually a couple different approaches. Matter of fact, there are uh, more than a couple different approaches you could take to get the right answer to uh, this particular equation. But I'm going to encourage you to kind of uh, recognize what's going on in this particular equation and go with one type of technique. Right? I'm kind of speaking in vague language here because I want you to think about this for a second. And uh, before I can, you can answer this question, what's the best way to solve this equation, you need to know what type of equation this is. So let me ask you, what type of equation is this? That's the first question I have for you. And then the second thing is, can you find the solution or solutions to this equation? If you could do all that, go ahead and put that into the comment section. Tell me what type of equation it is. Tell me the solution. And then tell me, even better yet, how you solved it. And then we're going to get into all this. And then you can be uh, kind of the judge of whether you think this is the best way to solve this or not. But uh, anyways, I'm going to be speaking about uh, a lot of stuff that's going to be extremely important to all of you out there that are studying any sort of algebra course. So we're going to get going here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in mathematics. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that seem to struggle in math. Okay, It doesn't have to be that way. What you need is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, check out my math help program. You'll find a link to it in the description of this video. I promise it will help you out big time. Also, for those of you that are studying for some sort of special test, things like the GED, SAT, ACT, all these type of tests have a math section on it, okay? Like the ASVAB, a teacher certification exam. Taking anything like that, I have a ton of test prep courses that uh, can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, check out my award-winning middle and high school math program for homeschoolers. If you need a pair of uh, math notes, hopefully you're taking your own notes. If you're not, you need to start working on taking better notes. But in the meantime, you can use my notes to study from. I'll leave links to those in the description of this video as well. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's get into what's going on here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the solution to this equation. We'll hold off on those other questions I asked you, uh, i.e. Uh, what type of equation this is and uh, how to solve it. I'm going to uh, tell you that in just one second. But first, I'm just going to give you the answers. Okay, so this particular equation, you have two solutions, all right? Three and negative seven. So you can write that this way. X is equal to negative three and seven. Or well, let's see here, negative seven and three. See how this, you know, always got to double check yourself in math. So easy to make a mistake. Okay, so uh, these are the solutions. If you got this right, irrespective of what technique you used, I must give you a nice happy face and A plus 100%. Matter of fact, I am going to give you a few extra stars here so you can have an extra special day. Nice job, okay? So, um, listen, uh, getting the answer right is a big part of any math problem, right? Uh, irrespective of what technique you have. But uh, in some equations, okay, oftentimes there's more than one path to take to get the right answer. Sometimes there's only one path. And now let's go ahead and talk about the rest of... Um, kind of the big picture of what I'm talking about in this video. Okay, so the first question I had for you is what type of equation are we dealing with? Well, the easiest way to kind of uh, determine that is to see that we have x plus 2 times x plus 2. So if we start multiplying these together, right, these two binomials, we're going to come up with this, x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4. Of course, I can combine all this and kind of clean this all up. But here's the thing, right? You know, what we're looking at here is a polynomial equation of degree 2, right? x to the second power. Here I can add these up as 4x, and here's 4. Again, I can clean this all up. But this is the key right here, right? So this is a, a polynomial equation to the second power or a second degree polynomial equation. And by definition, that is what we call a quadratic equation. So if you answer that correctly, let me go ahead and give you a happy face, right? Uh, I don't think it warrants a full A+. Plus. Of course, if you got this and the answer right, well, then, you know, you're just doing even better. 
But if you knew that this was a quadratic equation, that's very, very good because that's kind of the beginning of um, how to know what to do, right? If you First, you got to be able to uh, determine, hey, what type of equation I'm dealing with. Now you can think about, all right, how um, how was I taught to solve quadratic equations? Uh, quadratic equations, what techniques do we have? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that now. Okay, so when you are facing a quadratic e equation, you have some options, okay? So let's go ahead and just talk about the various things you can do. All right, so the first thing you might be able to do, you might be able to solve a quadratic equation by taking the square root of both sides, okay? Now, this might require some cleanup work. We'll talk a little bit more about this in a second. But taking the square root of both sides, I'm talking about something as basic as this. x squared is equal to 4. If I take the square root of both sides, this is a quadratic equation, by the way. x is equal to positive and negative 2. Now, one thing you need to know is in quadratic equations, there's always two solutions. Always, 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 always two solutions. So in this basic quadratic equation, x squared is equal to 4. My answers are positive 2 and negative 2. All right. Now... So I, I kind of uh, used the words, you might be able to do this. Not every single quadratic equation problem are you going to be able to take the square root of both sides. All right, well, let's talk about another technique that you might be able to do, and that is factoring, okay? Sometimes you can factor, sometimes you cannot. So if I have something like this, x times x plus 1 is equal to 0. If I distribute that x in, I'm going to get x squared plus x is equal to 0. Here, if I gave you this as the uh, question, you could factor that. Okay, so these are the factors, and you can actually solve uh, this quadratic equation by setting each factor equal to 0. So this case would be x equals 0, x plus 1 is equal to 0. So my answer would be x is equal to 0, and x is equal to negative 1. Okay, now this, is, uh, this technique is an awesome technique, uh, technique, and every time you can, take the square root of both sides, you should do that, right? But that's not going to be every quadratic equation problem. Same thing with factoring. You're not going to be able to factor every single quadratic equation, but when you can, you want to factor. Now, what happens if you can't take the square root of both sides and you can't factor and you're stuck with your quadratic equation? Well, then we need to go to our best friend, one of the most powerful things you learn in algebra, and that is the quadratic formula, okay? This is like our superhero of quadratic equations. This uh, quadratic formula can solve anything, okay? So uh, don't worry about it. Any quadratic equation in the course of quadratic formula is x equals minus b plus or minus uh, square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That's the quadratic formula. And, of course, you need to know how to use that. You know, all these things I'm talking about, you need to know. And finally... You can kind of uh, use, um, you could use something that's kind of like the long version of the quadratic formula, and it kind of interplays with taking the square root of both sides, but it's called the uh, completing the square, all right? And you're going to be um, asked to use completing the square uh, to solve quadratic equations. If you're studying any sort of algebra uh, class, your teacher's going to expect you to know all of this. So when you have a quadratic equation, you know right off the bat, it's always going to have two solutions. And then we kind of have to kind of shop around to find the right technique. Again, if you can't take the square root of both sides, that's what you do. If you can't factor, that's what you do. If you can't, then go to quadratic, the quadratic formula and never use the uh, completing the square unless you have to because this is kind of the longer way of using a quadratic formula. Okay, so this is a big picture roadmap to solve quadratic equations. And now let's go ahead and get into what's the best way to solve this particular equation. So if you multiplied x plus 2 times x plus 2 and you, and you were going in this direction right here, well, that's not the best way to go, okay? You will get all these things together. It's You know what? I'm not going to say it's uh, wrong because it's not wrong. But I, what I'd rather have you uh, recognize is this. If we have x plus 2, x plus 2... This is x plus 2 squared, okay? Anytime you have something squared like this, like an expression, that's generally a pretty good indication that uh, you want to be thinking in terms of taking the square root of both sides, okay? That's a nice direct path to uh, solve these type of quadratic equations. So uh, let's go ahead and continue this uh, now. So we have x plus 2 times x plus 2. That's the same thing as x plus 2 squared. Now I could just move this uh, negative 3 over to the other side of the equation. 
And that's pretty easy. All I have to do is what? I just add three to both sides of the equation. And you're going to get um, x plus two squared is equal to 25. Okay, so that's a situation where we, where we can take the square root of both sides of the equation. Okay, so here, this x plus two squared is equal to 25. Again, I'm kind of um, assuming that you are familiar with uh, with already solving some, um, you know, solve, having some experience with, with quadratic equations. By the way, if you're new to quadratic equations and all of this is kind of a little bit overwhelming, I would point you towards my Algebra 1 course. I have a great chapter on how just everything you need to know about quadratic equations. Of course, if you're at a higher level, Algebra 2, Pre-Calculus, you can check out those courses as well. But... Right here, we have something squared is equal to a number, right? So here's the deal. You could take the square root of both sides if you have something that, that something involves a variable squared is equal to a number, okay? An actual number value, a positive number value. Then I could just take the square root of both sides. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna take the square root of both sides. Okay, let's see that work right there. So I have the square root of x plus two squared is simply x plus two, okay? Whatever you are taking the square root of something squared, it could be y plus nine, all that squared. If you take the square root of that, you just have y plus nine, okay? So the square root of x plus two squared is simply x plus two. The square root of 25 is going to be both positive and negative five, okay? You have to include that negative root. Remember, negative five times negative five is equal to a positive 25, as is positive 5 times positive 5, right? We need that positive or negative version to get our two unique roots. Okay, so here, effectively, we have two equations. x plus 2 is equal to both positive and negative 5, but let's break them out uh, individually. So we have x plus 2 is equal to 5, and then we have x plus 2 is equal to negative 5, and then when we uh, uh, solve these respective basic equations for x, and our first answer, we just subtract 2 from both sides of the equation here, my first answer is 3, and when I subtract 2 from both sides of the equation here, I get my second answer, which is negative 7. Okay, so this is the uh, most direct path, uh, at least in my mind's eye. If you kind of um, multiply this together, that's fine too, right? But here is the really kind of the bottom line to solving quadratic equations. You need to have enough experience solving all of these, and the more practice you do solving all sorts of various types of quadratic equations, the better off you're gonna be, all right? Just, you know, from experience, you'll be like, oh, I recognize what to do here. I'm gonna take this path. Again, if you get stuck, you always go to the quadratic formula. And of course, uh, this is a discussion in and of itself. But hopefully, uh, this video helped you out. And if that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.